Okay, so I'm starting to work on getting these parts cleaned up. And a few of the small parts, like that little bracket, this shaft, uh, the power uh, piston, things like that, I've already kind of cleaned those up with some brake parts cleaner. So I'm going to set these off to the side. I haven't cleaned off any of the main body pieces. This would be the throttle body uh, assembly. It's all taken apart. Still has a little bit of gasket on there. So what I'm going to do next, we need to flatten out some of these surfaces. And somebody's already taken some sandpaper to some of these areas. You can see some pretty deep scratches in there. What I have here, this is a granite tile. Okay. These are cheap, especially if you can find them, you know, like one or two at a time, but they usually sell like in a package of four or five. This obviously would be used to like tile your kitchen, tile your bathroom, anywhere you want tile. And it is granite. And for our purposes, it's pretty darn flat. This is not a uh, machine shop grade uh, flat granite. So you're not going to find this in some aerospace uh, manufacturing company where they have very, very, very tight tolerances. Uh, for our purposes here in the backyard, it's perfect. So what I have here, just a small little uh, quarter sheet of 600 grit sandpaper. And we're going to dress a lot of these surfaces, not all of them, but a lot of them, especially on this throttle body piece, the bottom where it bolts to the intake manifold, the top here where it bolts to uh, the fl float bowl uh, assembly. So nothing fancy, we're just using some plain old WD-40. We're gonna spray some on our sandpaper and then just very gently, almost just using the weight of the part itself, not pressing down, just do some circles. If you had a big sheet, I would recommend using a full sheet, but this is all I have of 600 grit. Using a full sheet and doing a figure eight pattern. But this will work for our purposes here. I don't know if you can see that. I don't think that's gonna show up, but there is a little bit of aluminum that's coming off. This is cast aluminum. So let me wipe the, this off and we'll take a look at it. You can see it's kind of gray on the uh, paper towel there. But there we go. We got it smooth. We want a good mating surface for the gasket. That's what we want. We don't want any vacuum leaks coming in uh, through these uh, connections right there. And we certainly don't want any fuel leaking out of them as well. So I'm going to give this a couple more minutes on this piece. See if I can get some of these deep scratches out. I don't know who did that, but they certainly didn't. They used a, if they did it this way, they used a, a, a grit of sandpaper that was way too coarse. So, put a little bit of fresh WD and just keep going. So, after a few minutes of lapping this throttle body assembly, the lower portion of the carburetor uh, on the sandpaper on the uh, granite tile, we've got a pretty flat, really flat, smooth surface. I got most of those deep, heavy scratches out of there. The one thing I was most concerned about was right in here, there was a low spot, and I kept having to sand it. Uh, lap it in, lap it in, lap it in until I got down to that little low spot there. So this side, uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time working on this because um, basically I just want the engine to run and run reasonably well because uh, I do plan on doing an engine swap in the future, near future, hopefully. Uh, but this will help get it up and going. So, or back to uh, running well. So we'll just work on this side. I'm gonna get a razor blade and scrape off some of this gasket material. And we'll lap in this side again. You got some really nasty deep scratches in there. I don't know if that's sandpaper or maybe somebody took a file to it. I'm thinking sandpaper. Nonetheless, we gotta clean that up so we get a good mating surface uh, for our gasket. Okay, so we're moving on to this part here. This is the top part of the carb, the float bowl cover. The float bowl would be 
uh, in this area right in here. I noticed something right off the bat before I started uh, lapping it. This thing is pretty out of whack. So we got high spots here and here, and I think it's just low in this area right here. Maybe it's, it's flat on this side. So I think we need to address that and do a little bit more work to get that nice and flat because that is quite a bit of um, of rock to this part now those gaskets are thick but still uh, I think that would help a lot so I've moved uh, down a grit I, not really showing up but this is 400 grit sandpaper so we're gonna put that down and then sand on that and of course squirt it with our WD-40 and lap that in we'll work it with this 400 grit and then I've got that other piece of a uh, 600 uh, that will finish it off with so I've been working on this for a little while now we're doing pretty okay. We still got a low spot over there. That was the big low spot. That was what was causing it to rock so much. So kind of wipe off a spot here. Make sure that's no debris or nothing on that. It still has a little bit of a rock to it. But like I said earlier, those gaskets are really thick. And so I don't think we're gonna have a problem getting it to seal properly. I may work on this for a, a few more minutes, but in all reality, that's about as much time as I wanna put into this uh, little Rochester mono jet. It's not like it's an original Stromberg or something like that, or some, you know, some vintage carburetor that's not even produced anymore. It can't even be replicated. Um, it's just a Rochester Monojet carburetor. So, I'll probably sand on it a little bit more, but other than that, we're going to call it good. Then, take the carb cleaner, spray everything off, get it cleaned up, and then take it back inside and start reassembly. got a vacuum source on this and it's not holding vacuum I've got it taped up there's a little bleed off hole in there um, this thing is just bad and quite honestly I'm not gonna replace it um, I'll just replace the whole engine with something a little bit bigger
So we're ready to try and start it. Everything's all hooked back up. Um, you know, we adjusted everything back to where it was before we took the carburetor off. However, I think I mentioned this earlier, I didn't know that that choke pull off uh, was leaking. So effectively we had a vacuum leak. Uh, nonetheless, I plugged that vacuum port, uh, completely disconnected uh, the choke pull off uh, and plugged the vacuum leak. So uh, hopefully those, uh, the idle adjustment setting, the idle speed setting, all of that is still good uh, for trying to start it. So uh, I've got the ignition turned on. Obviously from the inside I'm using a little handheld uh, starter switch here on the outside and I've got a little bit of starting fluid because there's no uh, fuel in the bowl so I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of starting fluid uh, my battery is dead I need to switch this to start switch the charger to start so let me give this a squirt and we'll try this <laughs> Right, guys so we just put the carb back on the truck let me get on it here a little bit it's better I don't know how well you could hear that but one of the main problems that I was uh, dealing with before I uh, rebuilt the carburetor was uh, a stutter kind of a stumble uh, particularly under uh, under a load uh, like accelerating just like that uh, if I revved it up in the driveway not a problem at all uh, there's still some of that stumble in there but it's a lot better than it was so uh, aside from just doing a simple rebuild on it we kind of discovered uh, one problem if not uh, two one was that that choke pull off assembly that little uh, vacuum operated diaphragm thing that was leaking that could have been a source a major vacuum leak source that could have been contributing to the stumble um, the other one was uh, the gasket surfaces were not sealing properly uh, at least that possibly you saw me lap in those uh, three different uh, parts of the carburetor Meaning, I, you know, I taped that uh, piece of 600 grit to that uh, granite piece of tile and then kind of lapped them in, making them, making them smooth and, and reducing, really taking the height out because they weren't, they weren't level. So there's, there is a possibility that uh, there was a gap there that the gasket was not sealing and that could have been another source of a vacuum leak. Regardless the truck drives significantly better. It starts better, it idles better, it accelerates better. Um, and, and we really didn't do a whole lot to it. Uh, lapping in those surfaces, that's not common, um, but it was absolutely necessary, I think. Um, just doing a simple carb rebuild, that's quick and easy, nothing to it. Anyway, we, you know, we, we got it done, the truck is better. Uh, I apologize, I don't think this was probably a particularly exciting video. Um, 
but I knew I needed to put one together. Uh, I wanted to put one together for you guys. And so, but just something, you know, throw something out there that you may have never, never seen before, which is lapping those different parts of the carburetor together to get a better gasket fit. Um, other than that, once again, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Go check out my Facebook page for all the pictures, all the photos, everything uh, that I've taken of this project, of the bike projects, any project I've worked on. All of those pictures are on my Facebook page. Follow me on Instagram. I'll post uh, pictures here and there in between videos. And again, uh, thanks for watching, guys.